Okay, so this video is going to be more of a walkthrough of my digital camo uh, process here. These are the two stocks that I have previously done. This top one is for Ruger American and it has the Arctic Gray as the dominant camo color. As with the mags and the bipod there. This lower one is for Remington 700 and has the Snow Gray as the dominant color. I will be doing these two magazines and this bipod to match it. And one more project here I'll show you. This is a 1022 SBR project I'll be working on also. I'll be using the same colors as the two stocks earlier, but I'm gonna do a little bit differently. So those stocks had these colors sprayed individually. Combat black, snow gray, arctic gray, and white. For this one, I'm going to do the combat black as the dominant color, so that'll be my final color. But the three other colors, I'm going to do a mix of the combat black and the snow gray, and then the snow gray alone, and then a mix of the snow gray and the arctic gray. So no white in this one. I'll do the same clear coat that I've done before. It'll be a mix of the satin clear and matte clear, and then everything is going to be mixed 12 to 1 with hardener. Some pre-painting tips here. You can get an idea what colors are going to look like. You can order the individual swatches here, or you can get their collection book. has a lot more in it. doesn't have them all, but pretty close. If you don't like any of those, um, I've played around with it and mixed my own. So you just, you know, get one of those little color wheel things and these medicine droppers. That way you know your proportions of colors you're dropping in, you know. Throw in six reds and two blacks or browns or whatever, you know, count the drops you put in all of them and then kind of come up with your color. So that's pretty cool. Um, template wise, I've used the Lauer templates here and the Freedom templates or Freedom stencils. That's what these are. That's what I'm going to use. I found I like those a lot more. Uh, a couple reasons the Lauer's. You don't get nearly as many templates in them. They come in this pack here. And so, um, you know, you get a whole bunch more than this. Probably, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 pages. They each have just two patterns. So you peel those out, you stick them on, and then maybe you touch up with some females like this. This one was done with the Lowers. You can see it's got a lot of the base color in it. Um, the Freedom Stencils here, if you can see, there's a lot more pieces in there. It's a whole bunch of pieces per page. And you'll see that more when I start peeling them out and applying them. They give you, I don't know what this is, probably six pages per pack. So I like those a lot better. The one thing that the Lowers do better, they work much better for female stencils. So you see like kind of fishing touches, you just want to put a little dot on there, a little bit of this. They work way better. You can't really do that with these. You can if you want to add a bunch of tape to them and kind of jank them together. I've done that. Um, the other thing about these is the first time I did this, I only ordered one pack and it was not enough to do both those stocks, uh, the two magazines and the bipod. So once all the male templates were used, I cut these sheets up, <laughs> and these are all my little deals here that I just made out of the kind of existing or leftover females. So you can do that too, it's a bunch of extra work. Um, I would suggest ordering an extra pack of these so you don't run out like I did. Save yourself a bunch of time and headache. Uh, I have these out here just to show. I always like to practice beforehand. I would never used an airbrush before using Duracoat, so just getting the feel for an airbrush. I had also never done a camo job. So get an idea how these stencils work. Um, you know, they work great when it's pretty smooth. This has a little bit of texture to it. And then kind of get an idea of how it works if you want to put them on texture areas. So it still does work, but the edge is going to be a lot more fuzzy, as you see there. And, and this is kind of around a curved edge. So that'll do that too. You can use a hair dryer or heat them up and that'll make them form better instead of leaving creases or gaps. But kind of twofold, it'll tell you how your templates are gonna turn out. 
get you some practice, and then also just show you how your color turns out. And if you need to mix yourself a new one or whatever. You can just spray away if you want. Uh, spray over the hardware, mask off things you don't want to spray. Or you can disassemble. I like disassembling, so that's what I'm going to do. Here we are, disassembled and masked. I always take the guts out of the magazines and try to mask up or disassemble any uh, kind of grip or wear areas. So on the grips, buttons for folding stocks, uh, butt stock, there's buttons there, the feet on the bipod. One trick I've found, an easy way to mask off areas like grips where there's a hard line. Just take your thumbnail, run it down there real hard, it'll make a crease. And then you can just follow it with a razor blade. Make nice clean lines that way. Here is my painting booth. Pretty rudimentary, but does everything you need to do. I'll start with the parts rack over here. Just some dowels thrown together. Parts are hanging just with electrical wire. You know, find a screw or a hardware hole, something where you can mount to. See the magazines are clipped on with little clothes pins. Just wire bent in the shapes there. Moving on to the airbrush setup. This is a Pash single stage airbrush. Super basic. Um, I'd never done any airbrushing before, so I bought this and it's worked out great. Uh, they give you this little rack here for the airbrush, nothing to put it on, so I just kind of bootleg something together. Works good. Some tips here. Um, I've done several projects over the years. I do this probably not even once a year. Take a bunch of notes on every project you do. What you use, color-wise, hardener mixture, reducer, uh, paint volumes. That'll kind of give you an idea of what it takes to do things. Because you will forget and if you want to come back to something, you know, touch something up or just do something similar to what you did. Your notes will save your life. These are some of the cups and jars that you'll use. The Pash brush came with this cup and I think the one ounce cup here. Uh, the half ounce, I think I bought that extra. And the three ounce here, I bought that extra, I know. Uh, the little cup, if you're just doing real fine details on something, uh, half ounce might cover a handgun, uh, maybe a little bit more. One ounce will do quite a few parts. Um, if I have this part rack full, the one ounce cup will do that. The three ounce, I use that when I was doing those big stocks, when you're really throwing a lot of paint. Uh, PPE is a good idea. I wear a glove on the hand of the parts I'm holding. Uh, painting mask. Safety glasses, especially when you're cleaning stuff up. They say to use the Duracoat reducer to clean the airbrush. I usually do that first. Uh, in between colors, this stuff is pretty expensive, so I just go the cheap route. Use lacquer thinner. It has always worked for me. Hasn't damaged anything on the airbrush, the jars, or anything. So I do that between and then I finish up when I'm done with a project with some more reducer. I just got this pickle jar for throwing the um, lacquer thinner reducer extra paint in and then dispose of that after the project. Toothpicks are good for cleaning out the, the brush, the jars, getting all the nooks and crannies. That's pretty much the setup here. I'll show you the air compressor that I use. Here's the air compressor. It's just a tiny little hamburger air compressor. 150 PSI, six gallon. I have it set right around 30 pounds. That works pretty good. Set it outside, keeps the noise out here. Prep wise, I have found that acetone and a, just a scrub pad works really good. So put your gloves on so you don't get your oils on the pieces after you've cleaned them with the acetone. Scuff them with the brush or the pad, whatever you're gonna use, and then blow it off with air and you are ready to paint.
color wise on a camo job like this it doesn't really matter what order you do them you just want the last color you do to be your dominant color if you do your templates right so the more templates you put out the less of your dominant color you'll see vice versa for example this practice handguard i did white was the last color so you can't really tell the order of the three other colors say I did the snow gray and then put templates over it so then it blocked off those patches and then i sprayed black okay and then put templates over covered up those then did the what was that arctic gray same thing and then final coat of white take all the templates off do a clear coat my project's going to be a little bit funny here because i've got these mixtures of colors i'm doing so typically you've got five painting sessions you do i'm gonna have maybe six or so um, i'll have to mix some of these in between for the 1022 but i'm gonna start with the arctic gray for the um, three white magazines and bipod and then i'm gonna mix the arctic gray with the snow gray and do the first color on the 1022. So the snow gray by itself will be the last color I do on the magazines and bipod, and black will be the last color I do on the 1022. Between colors, going to rinse out the brush and clean out all the bottles with lacquer thinner. Let it dry for a few hours and you're ready for your first set of stencils. Make sure your hands are clean. Um, you don't want oil getting on there and preventing these things from sticking. The more stencils you apply, the more the color underneath will show. So, have at it. Here are the parts with the first set of templates applied to the magazines, the stock, and the bipod. I'm doing my colors all out of order because I'm doing the different schemes here, so I'll only be doing part of them this time. But just continue applying color and applying templates over and over until you get all your colors done. Having some camera issues here, the hard drive is filling up, so it's cutting some of these clips short. Apologize for that, but I think you get the idea. I'll kind of give you a closer look here. Um, you know, throw your base coat down, stick a bunch of these decals around there randomly. Make sure you put some of them over your masked areas here so they kind of run over the edges. Same thing around the edges of your painted area. Don't just go for the easy ones. You know, if you want it to look good then you gotta put some time into putting them all around the little nooks and crannies it is a patience game 
each time I'm doing these templates, it's probably an hour and a half to do my parts rack. This magazine has two coats on it. You can see the painted templates underneath. So that's the first coat. And I've reapplied some. When you're doing your second, third, however many layers you're doing, make sure you overlap some. You can kind of see they're touching. Um, sometimes, like I think this one here, is totally covering a couple. Do that too and you'll get the desired outcome. I do a lot of sort of corner to corner placements. You see that? There's one. You know, wrap around all your edges. And that'll look a lot better when you get your finished product. Um, I tend to run out of the smaller templates first kind of see what this is starting to look like so like I was saying the nice thing about these freedom stencils is you can kind of um, keep going on them per se you know you can see all these leftover pieces after the actual templates have been removed you start chopping away at them you know with your scissors and you can make a bunch more uh, if you're looking for just little pieces here and there I you know, just chop the corners of the template too, and just give you little tiny pieces, like probably that's one. I know there's some up here, like that rectangle. They're just corners of the template to give you extra pieces. When you're doing a whole bunch of parts at once, you know, you might run out, so. There you go. One other thing to mention here, uh, you see that I, when I'm doing the stickers, I'm doing it on this cardboard couple reasons for that uh, it's a clean surface you know when you're painting you get all this paint residue dust so keep some cardboard or something separate and clean so when you go to do your stickers you get a nice surface to work on also you'll see the vertical lines in the cardboard really help when you're applying to like a curved surface here so obviously the top of the magazine is going to be kind of my reference of the direction that I'm applying these so you keep that in this case perpendicular to the lines and then when you're working down here on the curved surfaces just look kind of through the magazine and just keep referencing those vertical lines and keep some of those edges vertical some of them horizontal and that way you kind of keep that reference the whole time Here are the parts ready for the next coat of paint. You'll see that there are more stickers this time. When you start adding more and more layers of the templates, you have to add more stickers to get the same amount of paint show through because you start overlapping them sometimes. And that, that gives you the better effect, but you have to put more stickers on. <laughs> Everything this time will be getting a coat of snow gray. Everything painted in snow gray. At this point, the two Magpul magazines and the bipod are done with colors. The 1022 stock and magazines need one more set of stencils, then they'll get a coat of black. The stencils will come off of everything and then clear coated. 
Here's the last application of templates on the 1022 stock and magazines. This application took me the longest just because on the final color I wanted to make sure that they showed through. You can take some of the bigger pieces and just lay it over top or what I did is I made sure all the little ones covered up spaces between since they're this is the third layer templates. This is what the stencils will look like when you're pretty much done with them. You can see I've cut them up a little bit here and there but you can see all the little pieces that you can stick on there like this guy here that's a solid piece if you put little ones under it do a color and then put this bigger one on top of it that'll get you your best result so that way you, it's not just kind of this giant blob you'll have a little bit of color inside that same thing up here this is one giant piece but that kind of gives you an idea of what you actually get now that they're all stuck Okay, moment of truth. This is the reveal. Before you do your clear coat, take all the stickers off. As before, make sure hands are clean because you are going to be painting over these. See if you can see what the pattern looks like. That's three layers of these templates. You can see the textured plastic parts still. That'll be the dominant color. I mentioned once you get all the stickers peeled off, it's ready for a clear coat. And it certainly can be if you want it to be. Um, a lot of times I'll go over it with the female stencils for multiple reasons. If you put down a big, bigger, this kind of medium stencil like here and here, where everything else has all these small little pieces, I'll go through and put a female stencil on those and uh, color on the inside a little bit or kind of wrap over the edge just to break it up. Other thing, let's see here, right here, I had a, a piece where the stencil actually peeled up the paint. So it's pretty hard to notice on this because black is my dominant color, my last color I painted, and the stock was originally black. So you kind of have to look for it, but because I know it's there, I'm gonna try and fix it. You don't even have to clear cut if you don't want to. If, if you like it, you can be just done at this point. Uh, I usually like the clear coat. A couple of benefits to that. Uh, looks and feel. It blends all the colors. It doesn't blend the colors. It, um, it kind of gives it a consistent sheen. So where sometimes your colors will be a little bit flatter, a little bit glossier. If you clear cut it, they all kind of have the same sheen that way. And also for feel, a lot of times these colors will come out a little bit rough. This isn't too bad, really. It really depends on the plastic or the metal that's under it. If it's real rough, you can basically cover that up with a clear coat. And so it's a lot smoother, you know, on your grip, on your cheek. So those are the reasons I usually do a clear coat. Here's everything with the stickers removed. You can see the two different color schemes, the bipod, the magazine here, the four colors straight out of the bottle. The 1022 is the black and the snow gray individually, and then the two mixes I did. And the mountain stickers, I don't even want to know how many are in there. But time for uh, female stencils, and I'll demonstrate that. This Pash airbrush that I'm using comes with the different parts here. 
comes with two air caps, three different size tips, and two needles. I've been using the medium tip this whole time. It's been working just fine. When I do the female templates, I'll drop down to the smallest tip. It lets out a whole lot less paint and is a lot easier to control. You don't have to worry about overspraying the templates, getting it on your firearm or whatever you're working on. If you're doing big objects, you know, just stocks or something big, I would use the largest tip. But even the stocks that I've done, I've used the medium tip the whole time and it doesn't take that much time. These are the Lauer stencils. Uh, this is the one place that they will do better for the most part. You can see I've used that one before, but these are the sheets they give you. They have just two on them. Every single sheet has two patterns. Some are bigger, some are smaller. So you don't get very many for doing all the, the male templates, but they work really well for the females. They don't stick nearly as well as the Freedoms do. So you have to watch that. Make sure you're pressing down the edges super well because you'll get more creep than you will with the freedoms. So these, you can tell, started as the freedoms. I just cut, <laughs> cut some of these out. You know, these sheets usually turn into pretty good hack jobs when I'm done with them, because you yeah, like to reuse them. You know, make these little females out of them, or a bunch of these are just those templates cut up too to make my own little pieces. So use what you got. If you don't have the lowers or something that works good for females make your own you can just use tape too if you want to make just a little square you know you can make that same effect or if you just need to cut a little line to cover up some of the fuzz you know i've just used tape to make crisp edges too So you probably saw there, I uh, I kind of gave up on the Lauer female templates about halfway through or so. They just really don't stick that well. It's really fighting them. If you're trying to go around any sort of crease, they just don't work. If it's really smooth and fairly flat or a constant curvature, they're doing okay. But, uh, you know, I was just making up my own out of the Freedom stencils. You know, make the little ones and a little bit bigger ones. You know, there's so much freedom in them no pun intended, whatever shapes you want to make, you know? And so I would, I would go freedom stencils all the way. I wouldn't even bother with the Lowers. So now we will, we're going to let that stuff dry and move on to clear coat. One big thing that I forgot to mention about the clear coat is it's really a protective layer too. So it'll protect against scratches and any sort of chipping if you start banging them around. So go for a clear coat if you're looking for a durable. They've got three different clears I think, uh, matte, uh, satin in a gloss, and you'll see I have found my favorite to be a mix of the matte and the satin for these camo jobs. It, uh, it's not too shiny, not too flat, but it just looks real good. So the way I figured out that I like the combination of clears here is just by experimenting on my first test piece. So I gave it like half Satin clear, half matte clear, flipped it over, and I had, I don't remember what the ratio was, but some ratio of satin and matte, and another ratio of satin and matte, and just came out that I liked the two to one best. So what your ratio is gonna look like if you're doing a mix like this, usually it's a 12 to one when you're just doing a color and a hardener. When you're mixing two to one, it's gonna be 12 parts satin to six parts, mat to 1.5 parts uh, hardener so i think it's going to take about two ounces to do everything i'm doing here so i'm going to use my three ounce cup and then two ounces is just about 60 milliliters so i'm going to do 40 of satin 20 of matte and five of the hardener and it'll come out just how i want it i put the medium tip back in 
the brush here. Here's everything I've done with the Freedom stencils. Those are the magazines in the bipod I just did to match the snow gray dominant camo pattern. This is what I've done earlier, the Arctic gray dominant. And there's the 1022 just did.